my wishes have changed from wanting to be extraordinarily beautiful to just being average. Don't pick your skin, pick vanish. Hello perfect beauties, my name is Daisy. I am the founder and CEO of Vanish. Recently, during one of my lives, one of my earliest followers remembered the video they watched. It was called The Truth About Being Beautiful, which I will have linked here and also down there. And in that video, I think it was one of my most vulnerable videos because I discuss really what being beautiful and not being beautiful is like. For you guys who don't know my story, I've had acne, I was kind of outcasted, I looked different from everybody, and I was just made fun of because I was considered ugly. I wanted to share with you guys at 29 years old what it's like being beautiful and why. If given the opportunity, I wouldn't want to be an extraordinarily beautiful woman. Even though that was something that I have longed for when I was so much younger, my wishes have changed from wanting to be extraordinarily beautiful to just being average. When I was younger, I looked different from everybody else. I had acne. I remember this guy I wanted to go to prom with, he told me to put a paper bag over my face. He was making fun of me and I was making fun of myself too, but it really hurt and I just knew from a young age that I was considered unattractive compared to what people thought. So I was never the beautiful girl in school, never the hot girl. In college, I still had bad acne. I still kind of was through this transition phase where I was starting to feel like I was becoming more beautiful and growing into my own skin. I was portraying myself as a beautiful kind of hot girl and I would wear bodycon dresses, high high heels, nails always done, eyelashes always done, hair always done like this, just kind of looking like this. And I had always had this dream of wanting to be extraordinarily beautiful and stunning that I could stop men in their tracks and I could have power over other people. That was kind of this, not goal of mine, but this thing that I wanted to have because I never knew what it felt like to be so pretty because I always had felt ugly my entire life. During this transition, I think I was about 21 to probably about 26. I just remember going to places, going to a club or going to an event or whatnot and just having, especially those of the male gender, be so interested in who you are as a person. Somehow they wanted to get to know you, somehow they thought you were cool, and somehow they thought what you said was funny. I, I'm not gonna lie, I really did appreciate the attention from there, but it was kind of interesting because you could definitely tell who wanted to talk to you simply because of the way you looked and who wanted to talk to you because of who you were as a human being or who you are um, personality wise because I know there were some guys who just pretended to be interested in me simply to want things to get to the next level and then there were other guys who actually seriously like cared about what I had to say and my hobbies and interests and stuff like that. So it was just really, really interesting how I could tell from a mile away who was what. But the interesting thing is that when I portrayed myself as a beautiful woman with the beautiful hair, the makeup, the nails, the body, all that kind of stuff, I realized I attracted a very particular type of male. And this type of male was very, I would say status oriented, status driven. So I remember first when I went to LA, I met this, this guy who was significantly older than me and I had no idea because he was Asian and you know, Asian guys like, you know, you have no idea how old some Asian people are, but he had, you know, the beautiful penthouse, the beautiful car, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. And it was very clear that he liked me because of how I looked on paper. You know, I was a beautiful girl who graduated from a good school and who had a good job and all that kind of stuff. But he also was very, I would say, kind of messed up a little bit. He lived in this life where money and status and perception was everything. It was crazy. I was also introduced to this guy who was apparently very, very wealthy. I had no idea who this person was. Apparently a friend of a, a friend's friend introduced me to him and he's very just not attractive at all. Really the thing that he had going for him was money. We only went on one date but on this first date 
he was just talking all the time about his investments and his money and the land he owns and the famous people he's gonna meet and how in his car it has like bulletproof windows or something. Something where he made him seem like a big, big deal. And the entire time and the entire conversation was all about him. And I remember, this is before I started Banish, but I said I wanted to start like, like a company, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. And he just completely glossed over it and went on to his business and his whole thing and all that kind of stuff. I remember there was one particular time he made the date sound like a business transaction. He said, I would provide for you and I would give you these things. What what I need is someone like a Princess Diana role. And I was and I was like, what the fuck? Like like what does that mean, Princess Diana role? Does that mean I'm gonna like die in a car accident at the end? Like it was so crazy, but I think what he meant was you know, this is a transaction and he mentioned something in this first date or I guess this business meeting. He said, you know, you would be expected to represent me and my charitable works and, you know, be this beautiful woman who is very pleasant and well-educated, well-spoken, kind of maintain the status and the relationships I have with everybody else out here. But of course I knew deep down inside that meant I would have no opinion of my own. I would have no volition, no freedom, no adventure to do stuff that I wanted to do. I would be really at the mercy of this wealthy or older gentleman to play this role and this part in his charitable events and at parties. And it was just crazy because I knew he didn't really care about me. He didn't really like me for who I am. He just cared about what I could represent to him. And I think from that, I realized that the men who were interested in me and the people who were interested in me were interested in me because of the image that I portrayed and the feeling they got when they were with next to a beautiful woman. It was kind of like driving a beautiful car. You know, you're getting attention from people. People want to take pictures with you. But at the end of the day, you're a commodity. And at the end of the day, if you have any thoughts and feelings of your own, they don't really matter because it is the man's prerogative to do what he wants to do and you're kind of that beautiful face next to him to support him in his journey and stuff like that. That's when I realized that when you are that beautiful, not saying that I was that beautiful, I'm just saying that I portrayed myself in that kind of character, in that kind of role. When you are somebody who is beautiful and stunning, you get a lot of distraction, meaning you get a lot of people who want to get to know you because of the way you look, but they don't actually want to get to know you because of your personality or your interests or your heart or your soul or your hobbies. They really want to get to know you because they want what you as a beautiful woman provides, which is status for a man. And I think for the longest time, I had this notion and I had this thought that if I am that beautiful, if I am that good looking, then people will like me and people will want to talk to me. But what I realized all along is that the people who are going to like you solely for your looks and are only going to be attracted to you solely because of your hot bod or your big boobs, your nice butt or whatever it is, those people are not gonna be there when your nice butt is falling, you know, flat <laughs> or your boobs are sagging or when you age, you know, 20 years from now and all that stuff. And so what I realize now, being almost 30 years old, that being stunningly beautiful is actually somewhat of a distraction because you start attracting people who only care about their status and how they are perceived in relation to having a beautiful woman next to their side. And ever since I discovered that, I stopped portraying myself in that beautiful woman kind of way. Occasionally, you know, I would still wear makeup and still look really nice um, for special events or whatnot, but most of the time I would just go out there without makeup, wearing like um, leggings and t-shirts and stuff and not feel pressured to want to look beautiful because I realized that the people who are genuinely good people are going to treat me with respect and kindness and they're going to want to get to know me and my personality and my heart and my soul regardless of how I portray myself, regardless if I do portray myself as this hot, hot woman or just as a normal average girl. And I also found myself being less distracted, I also found myself not attracting a lot of attention and just being able to like go through my way and not feeling like 
I don't want to say it's like you have to ward off people, but it's kind of like being a celebrity. Like if you are going in your celebrity guise, then you're going to have to ward off people who are trying to come at you and talk to you all the time. Um, but if you're just being average and normal, then you can just go on your merry way and everything is fine and it just makes life so much more efficient. Now that I am 30 years old almost, I'm very, very glad that I didn't grow up stunningly beautiful and that I have the opportunity to play the role of being just an average girl or being a really hot Instagrammable girl that I'm not so, so beautiful where it makes me an obvious you know, status symbol, right? I think that it's really traumatic also for women who are stunningly beautiful, who all their lives have been told they are beautiful, who are always getting unwanted attention from the opposite sex, who, you know, are just characterized and classified by their beauty. I've noticed that, you know, as they get older, they start freaking out because they're seeing things sag, they're seeing them gain weight, or they're seeing lines and wrinkles, and so they are the ones who are subject to so much Botox and plastic surgery and all that because they're trying to keep their youth alive, they're trying to keep their looks alive. And sometimes, unfortunately, if their husband is only attracted to them because of their beauty, and you know, because they are stunningly beautiful, it's easier for a lot of men to fall for them and to love them um, because of their looks than 20 years from now when they lose their beauty and they're not as beautiful and youthful as before, a lot of times these men will leave them and go off to the younger woman. And it's just kind of like, well, what was the whole point of being beautiful in the first place? Like I would much rather just be an average plain Jane and fall in love with someone and be with somebody who loves me for me, not for my looks. So that way if I do gain you know, 100 pounds or lose 100 pounds or whatever, that man or that person will still be with me regardless. That's kind of one of the reasons why now I don't really care about being stunningly beautiful. That's one of the reasons why I don't necessarily wear so much makeup or portray myself in a certain way. I just go out in whatever is comfortable. Um, occasionally I will dress up and look really nice, for example, for this video. But most of the time I just look completely normal and I'm totally fine with that. And it's just so crazy how my views have changed maybe in five years after having experienced what it's like to be that beautiful woman that everybody wants to get to know and talk to and take pictures with, right? Moral of the story, and I want to tell all you guys, my audience, and I treat you guys like my little sisters, that if you don't feel beautiful and if you are jealous of the girl who is absolutely stunning and who is like an Instagram model and all that, there's really nothing to be jealous about because that girl has a lot of distractions. She's attracting a lot of people who are probably not very good for her and who probably don't care about her if she were to not look that way. And I think it's super, super stressful. If all you have is your beauty, then if anything happens to the way you look, if you get in a car accident, whatever, just think about it. You could lose everything, right? You feel like you have nothing left because everyone you've attracted only liked you for the way you look. Like that's really, really scary. And I wouldn't want to be in the position where everyone in my life was with me for the way I looked and you know anything could happen to me at a drop of a hat that would change the people in my life so that is the truth about being beautiful and the truth about why I do not want to be a stunningly beautiful woman anymore I want to work on other things in my life like my passions my motivations my company my personality so let me know in the comments below if you guys have experienced what it's like to be stunningly beautiful at any point in your life and tell me like what it's like like what is it like to be you know beautiful what is it like to walk into a room and have everybody look at you what is it like for people to bend over backwards or want to take pictures with you let us know what is it like and would you want to continue your life that way or not so thank you all for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and i'll talk to you guys later bye